Hi, welcome back. As promised, Sun TV is the stock on our radar right now. It posted a very strong set of earnings as the ad revenue and subscription growth beat street estimates. SL Narayanan, the group CFO of the Sun Group, joins us now to talk about that. Mr. Narayan, good morning and thanks so much for joining us. <clears throat> Of course, this was a very good quarter for you in terms of your ad revenues, etc. But I want to understand what's happening with the OTT platform, Sun Next. What are the kind of um, you know investments that you're making in, on the digital front? And um, when do you hope to break even? Good morning and thanks uh, for hosting me this morning. Uh, so uh, let me first start with uh, the Sun Next uh, question. Uh, we've been around for almost eight, 18 months now, and we've just about uh, crossed a million paying subscribers. And uh, we think this is going to become a very important uh, part of our business. Uh, because uh, the way we are proceeding on this is to make sure that our distribution is pretty widespread. and. Uh, there, we've leveraged the, uh, the smartphone ecosystem in the country. So we've now signed up uh, content deals with uh, all three major uh, carriers in the private sector. So Sun Next will now be available as an app within the uh, mobile uh, TV app of each of these brands. So through that, we hope to be uh, targeting a majority of the 360 million smartphone users in the country. And I read somewhere some trade reports uh, which seem to suggest that this number is going to grow by leaps and bounds. And uh, India could well be the largest smartphone market for several years to come. See, all of which augurs well for Sun Next. Uh, we are hosting a lot of uh, original shows now. We, we've had uh, three major audio release functions uh, and uh, you know the promos for two of our blockbuster hits, uh, which is Sarkar and Pete. So some of those uh, uh, programs were first available on Sun Next, and more recently we had the 75th uh, birthday celebrations of Yale uh, Raja, who's one of uh, uh, the Tamil film world's uh, most uh, respected musicians. So some of the back uh, back stage uh, footages were exclusive, uh, exclusive on Sun Next. So as we go forward, we will start uh, stepping up investments into Sun Next. Uh, as I said, we have crossed about a million subscribers, and the daily intake is averaging anywhere between 20 to 22,000 new subscribers. So this is now actually growing exponentially, uh, justifying further investments into original content on uh, Sun Next. So, uh, Mr. Uh, in Narayanan, terms of the that, total investment, yeah, sorry. No, no, that just brings me to the follow-up question. Uh, if you're going to be making more investments, what would the quantum of these investments be, not just for Sun Next, but even, you know, your foray into the uh, Bangla and the Marathi markets? Together, what would the investments be, and what kind of damage would that have on your margins in the near term? You know, uh, this is uh, not to be seen as damage because uh, these are very productive investments. Uh, the reason why Sun TV enjoys an extraordinarily high margin, I mean, we've consistently delivered upward of 70% EBITDA margin, which, if I'm not wrong, is highest in the world. I don't think there's any media company that reports this kind of margins quarter after quarter. I mean, we had IPL, uh, you know, uh, proving to be a drag in the first five years. And in the sixth year, we've recovered all the operating losses uh, uh, that we made in the first five years. So the margins are back at 70% plus. The way these investments work is they can be repurposed and reused, redeployed across platforms. So if you look at some of the movies that we bought in the mid-90s, they're still generating revenues. And since most of these costs are already amortized, every subsequent screening of these movies produce revenues that drop straight to the bottom line. So uh, I wouldn't look at these as uh, investments that do damage to the PNL, maybe in the short run. And again, you know, uh, we are a very thrifty company. We are unlikely to bet the farm on any one, uh, you know, business idea. So even if you look at our Bangla investments, 
I think the first year we would be spending somewhere between 80 to 85 crores on content, carriage and local administration, branch office, management all put together. Mm. We will step that up as we go forward because every six months we will add more content and we think we'll break even by end of the second year. Okay, so um, those are some straight takeaways in terms of the investment and the break-even timelines. Uh, Mr. Narayan, take your point, absolutely not damaging. I mean, this is the future, right? Future is already here when it comes to digital content. Uh, let me talk about the bread butter business because uh, even there, it's been a very strong quarter for you, both on the ad growth front as well as subscriptions. Now, what is driving advertising growth? Are these kind of numbers sustainable? And typically, as we get into election season, uh, do these numbers sort of jump up even for a broadcaster like you? Yeah, see, advertisement revenues will always be growing because the way I look at it, I have a slightly uh, uh, different view from most of uh, my friends in the industry. Television advertising is not going to drop at all. I mean, you look at all the OTT platforms worldwide, there are no ads. End of the day, companies need to advertise about their products, new launches, brand extensions. And there is no better way to reach the mass market than television. I mean, if you look at the South Indian uh, Peninsula, we estimate there are about 54 million homes uh, that are either on cable or satellite. And that represents a near 90% penetration of all addressable homes. So, and that's the reason why I remain very, very optimistic on prospects for advertisement revenue to grow. And uh, we, uh, we, we are a dominant player in each of these four uh, states, five states if we take Telangana as a fifth state. Essentially four uh, Dravidian languages and we have a very dominant position there. And that number nominally I think should be growing at anywhere between 12 to 15 percent and I tell you why. If the economy is growing at about six and a half to seven percent and we have stable inflation rates of around five to six percent, the nominal GDP should be growing at about 12% and ad revenues historically have grown at a factor of at least 1.2 to 1.5. It goes to 1.5 in a boom year when growth goes up to seven, seven and a half. So I am reasonably sure that, uh, I mean, I may be wrong in terms of any specific year, but if you were to extrapolate a trend line into the future, I think ad revenues for the TV business should grow anywhere between 12 to 15%. And as we improve our positioning in terms of ratings, that number could actually have an upside. Okay, so that's about ad revenues. What about subscription revenues? What kind of growth do you see there? And do you see any disruption uh, because of the TRAI uh, tariff implementation? If yes, what could the, um, you know, the impact be? See, subscription revenues have been growing uh, very, very handsomely, particularly for Sun TV, because one of our largest markets, which is Tamil Nadu, which incidentally has the highest TV penetration in the country, I think 95% of all Tamil Nadu homes have television. And as luck would have it, this was the only market where digitization didn't play out as early as it did in the rest of India. So our moment in time has arrived in the last uh, 12 months. We have seen a ramp up in the pace of digitization in Tamil Nadu. Uh, our estimate is there are 18 million homes in Tamil Nadu, of which 12 million have already been digitized. And another 6 million homes are still being served by analog circuits. And those could get uh, converted in the next quarter or two. So uh, that translates to uh, an immediate uh, ramp up in the subscription revenues and which is why in the last several quarters we've been consistently growing at about 25% uh, year on year. I expect this to continue for at least a few more quarters as the remaining opportunity gets fully materialized. Mm. Well, Mr. Narayan, let me ask you an odd question. Um, one of your peers is looking to pare down uh, their stake in the crown jewel and I'm, of course, talking about Z Entertainment. I have in any interest, any thought whatsoever, any sort of synergies, anything that uh, you have in mind with respect to what's happening here? Do you seriously expect me to answer this question <laughs> on prime time? <laughs> maybe give us a sense of how you're thinking, how the, maybe the, how the management is thinking. <laughs> uh, no, 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 I, I, I don't think... Uh, uh, 
I think uh, Shubhashi has built an amazing company. It's a powerhouse, and I'm sure uh, uh, you know they will ride over these difficulties. We have the highest regard for Z, and I don't think I can say anything more than that. All right, uh, Mr. Narayanan, thanks a lot for joining us today. That's Sun TV, good numbers, and uh, the stocks rallied a bit. Uh, uh, keep in mind, it's really been a one-way decline before that. And uh, uh, today, of course, it's cooled off a bit after yesterday's monster move of 10%. Uh,